So how much is this car? And welcome to Joe Macari Ferrari and Maserati dealership. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not all they sell, but they do specialize in those cars. And the reason I'm here, as the title of this video would suggest, is that they have a rather tasty F12 TDF in this showroom. And right now, I'm sure if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that I've got a massive craving for one. Now, at the minute, the prices are pretty crazy, but this is, at the risk of sounding obscene, the cheapest that I've seen so far. Reason being, it is a left-hand drive car in a right-hand drive market, but we'll discuss that shortly. Anyway, without further ado, let's hop inside and see what's what. <laughs> oh dear. There it is. How's it going? Guys, this is Dylan. Uh, I've known you now for the past few months at least. Yeah, We've been crossing paths quite a lot. Um, it's no secret on this channel that um, I have this this sort of unrelenting desire for an mm. F12 TDF, which is weird because right I here. barely drive my own yeah. F F12, like standard yeah, yeah, yeah. F12. Um, I don't know. What, I like. There's this trend with me at the minute that I seem to prefer the sort of hardcore variations of whatever mm. car that might be. Mm -hmm. So I've recently gone back to a Speciali. Of course. I'm still the owner of a 675 LT, mm -hmm. which is the sort of hardcore variant of a 650S. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it's all about, as these guys know, the smiles per gallon factor. Okay. And from my experience over the years, it's always the hardcore variants that mm -hmm. just set me alight, man. Well, like, wasn't one of your first really cool cars a Scuderia? It was. There you go. That didn't that didn't end too well. No, I'm, Th well, I'm thanks, well aware. Thanks for bringing that one up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, every car that ha that I have the fondest memory of mm -hmm. is always the sort of the more impractical, the more hardcore yeah. version. The problem <clears throat> with these is um, I haven't bought enough normal. Ferraris to have ticked the acceptance box. Of course, that Cavallino black. Boat. Exactly. So I often get asked, you know, "Why don't you just? Why didn't you just buy one?" I was like, "Well, quite frankly, I just didn't get the invite." No, I mean, <laughs> you, you have to have bought every single road car they've made for the last ten years. Literally really, everything. Yeah, and that is not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people who are quoting me stuff like, "Even to have got the invite, if you owned lots of cars but didn't have a current V12 in ownership at the current time of this being launched, you didn't really? qualify." So. Let's talk about this car. Oh, it's so cool. So, so 799 of these made yep. worldwide. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason I am only able to afford a left-hand drive one. <laughs> well, I, I, which, is, I, I, yeah. which actually, it's this can be looked at in two ways, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to tie up as much cash in the first place. Completely, yeah. So, you know, you're just looking at different tiers. You're only going to get into it at a more expensive bracket to mm -hmm. therefore sell it at, at a more expensive bracket. Arguably, a left-hand drive there's a larger market for it. Do you know you you're, you're speaking like a true car sales really? Because honestly, like, the, or is this just man maths? No, 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 no you do. <laughs> it just makes sense. I mean, you know, we 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 stock probably eighty percent left-hand drive cars. Do you really? Yeah, I mean, we we, we pretty much specialise in it. And and what I will always okay. say to anyone is, yeah, most people are like, oh, left-hand drive in the UK, it's a bit weird. You spend five minutes and you just get used to it. It's, it's true. Not a problem. It is and true. As you said, it's cheaper, hmm. and you have a bigger market to sure. get out of it. And because yeah. someone's only going to pay a premium for a right-hand drive car, true, if they're in a right-hand drive country. So that's Correct. like. Australia, South Africa, and the UK, and yeah. maybe there's one or two others, yeah. but it's it's nothing. The other thing I worked out is, I actually do almost as many miles in left-hand drive territory as mm. I do in right-hand drive. I spend, mm. I spend more time driving right-hand drive, but I do almost as, as many miles, because as soon as I go into the into Europe for a left-hand yeah, yeah, drive yeah. experience, I'm doing like a thousand, like 3,000 miles in two weeks, mm. like straight away. If I do a, a few of those a year, if you actually look at the time spent, like the actual mileage spent abroad versus here, mm. left-hand drive would be 
quite cool actually. Well, it, Particularly I mean, it, for like it approaching tolls and yeah, things. Yeah, because you know? it means, you know, when, when, when you go out and you're going to go on like a proper driving adventure, mm. more often than not, you're going to be doing that in Europe. So yep. you're going to want a left-hand drive car. This is true. Now you're talking like a true salesman. <laughs> I'm not, by the way. I'm not a salesman. So, so talk me through this car. Um, the paint, I mistakenly thought it was Grigio Silverstone. Well, I did too and, until I re read the sort of build sheet. What it is, it's can canny de fusillet, which is a sort okay. of historic colour. I'm not sure where it arises from, but what that translates to literally is shotgun. Shotgun. So, so that's, shotgun that's grey. Shotgun grey. I mean, how cool is that? Shotgun grey TDF. The nicest colour. That's so cool. And amazingly, this is if you saw pictures of my first speciality, this mm -hmm. is almost if it if it was Grigio Silverstone, which let's face it, it's like a Pantone out. Completely, yes. Um, the stripe. We've got mm -hmm. a Nurbur Nurburgring Argento. Yeah, Argento Nurburgring. Yeah. Basically silver. And, exactly. um, imagine if I, if I kept the, if I kept them and I was able to pair it with Dude. this, it would be the dream. Yeah, be so cool. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, seven hundred and ninety nine cars made. These are the six point three litre V12. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because on the 812 Superfast, the car which has superseded the F12, um, they've upped that even further to a 6.5. Now I'm, I'm in a situation where I have the option to get an 812, but it might be a t sort of like a 2019 car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what's funny about this, I've never driven a TDF. We need to, so, we need to correct that. So, then. I mean, while I'm like, I really want one, at the same time, I should probably drive one. <laughs> I, I think you absolutely should, but I think it's one yeah. of those things where every person... I mean, I, I, I haven't driven one of these yet. Okay. And everyone I know who has driven or owned one has just been absolutely blown away. We know people that have yeah. had uh, a laugh and a TDF, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they've held on to the TDF and got rid of the laugh. Right. These things are just So, magic. I have experienced a La Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Not doing any injustice to that car at all, because it is performs part of the Holy Grail. Completely. Uh, but... <laughs> When you're going at slower speeds, mm -hmm. it's almost like a 458. It's it so usable. Is. It's so usable. Yeah. Now, I can't confidently comment on this, mm. but owners I know have had them, and people I've experienced them, even journalists have said, this thing is mental. Yeah. Like, if you're not on the ball, you probably better not because, get in it. I mean, you you will well know. But that's in what your I'm F12, looking for. Those things try to kill you left, right, <laughs> and centre, and this is just even up to even eleven. four. So in the wet, if it's raining, I don't even take the F12 out. No. There's literally no point. Mm -mm. It's stupid. Wet mode. The calibration that they've done on these things is incredible. It's witchcraft. It, yeah. it is brilliant. Mm. But because it holds the car back so much, you're not you're not experienced of anything of what you've actually paid for. It, it basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to drive the car rather than it. exactly. It, ma it makes it so yes. that you'll keep it on the road rather, rather than being able to uh, enjoy it. it rather than ending up yeah. through the hedge backwards. Yeah, literally for sure. So how much is this car? I think it's 750. Christ. 100,000. Yeah. And list these were like three forty. Uh, that would have been a very high spec car. I mean, this is this is a this, this is a has car play, car. passenger display. Like it's got a, it's got a signature color. I love this limited edition one of seven nine nine. That's so that's cool. right. And satin carbon mm -hmm. like that's How nice lovely. How doors, man? Also, it has the stalk out of the LaFerrari yeah. and Speciale, Speciale, which I really like. Um, gearbox now. Again, haven't driven one of these, so that has to be the next video or one coming soon. Sure. I have to. I, if you're looking at that kind of money, you've got to experience every every so facet of it. We've got a couple lying around, so I'm sure we could all. As you do, we've got a couple <laughs> out back. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. I'm definitely going to get behind the wheel of an F12 TDF soon. Um, the gearbox on the 812, mm -hmm. out of everything that that thing offers, the relationship between the drivetrain mm -hmm. and the engine is. It's unbelievable. It, gave, it literally gave me goosebumps. How, like, how did you feel in compared to PDK? Because PDK has always been the sort of yardstick for the most amazing automatic gearbox. Yeah, ca categorically, the best road shift gearbox I've ever experienced is in the GT3 and GT3 RS, the mm. 991 mm. gen. Um, I mean, that is a, an audible tone change. If yeah. you didn't know that it had changed gear, you'd think it would just sound different. Well, I took, I took, I took a 911 GTS out, and mm. I was driving down the road, and then I was in seventh, seventh gear, and I was, but I haven't felt it change. <laughs> it just goes... <laughs> it's like an electric car with an it engine. It's, it's so it's weird. Madness. Um, so, I, as you quite rightly said, I benchmark against that. Mm. 812, pff, not far off. Not far really? off. Really? Now... To say not far off is much bigger achievement than you might think because it's got way more torque, mm -hmm. double mm -hmm. the cylinders. <laughs> I mean, it's 
you know, 800 horsepower rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated V12, it's with a with a gearbox that every time I ch I changed, I would have to like. I would go back up a gear again mm -hmm. just to unnecessarily down change again. Well, it's, just it's, like, like, it's like you were saying, that actually playing happen? an instrument. These are like playing instruments. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Not so, only by the way that the gear shift is actuated, the sound, mm. dude. Just the way they do like sort of trumpets as you go down. Out of this so world. So cool. So, so special. The two negatives, I guess. Obviously, the price is obscene. It's, it's pretty um, Also, there's no option these days to spec mm. an F12. What's TDF. your dream spec? Um, either Rosso Fuoco. Okay, I like that a lot. Or a <clears throat> very metallic blue, like a triple layer, a pearlescent blue, like like TDF blue. Okay, I need potentially to... a little bit lighter. I'll show I'll show you a picture of it. Oh, we sold that exact. No, you didn't. Perfect. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's check out. The outside, and then um, yeah, consider options. There we go, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right then, as as over as, as overly excited as I was on the inside, mm -hmm. I think it's the outside that actually sells it to me. This is why I have this sort of completely irrational desire for these mm -hmm. things, because without driving one, you can't really categorically say be. yes. As you mentioned earlier, no matter what color these things are in. Just obscene. I mean, the things I can count that when we put a picture of an F12 TDF on Instagram, it yeah. would be probably the most liked photo we've ever put up. Seriously. Every single time. The Every desire for these things time. is madness. So, uh, so that livery itself is called Ner Ar Ar Argento Nurburgring. Which basically means silver stripes and black stripe. <laughs> <laughs> Sculpture. Now, the aero work on this is next level crazy. Uh, every time I Look at these fins, I can't help but think shark face. Yeah, literally. <laughs> you know what I mean? It literally has really gills. So much gills here. Um, and interestingly, one of the uh, features on the F12 was that it had that, those active aero flaps that yeah, opened yeah, yeah, on the brakes yeah, yeah. when they needed mm -hmm. cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, Ferrari at the minute think you're going to need that all the time. Pretty and much. they just opened it. Yeah. <laughs> so, pretty cool. Wheels. Uh, TDF, I believe, came with titanium bolts as standard. Um, titanium wheel bolts on Ferrari, mm -hmm. they know what they're doing because, they do. because if you have a standard wheel bolt, uh, they're sort of rounded and okay. polished chrome. Right. And they, I'm not going to go so far as saying they look cheap, mm -hmm. but they look better. Well, they're just, they're, <laughs> they sort of fit with the character of the actual rim itself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think as an optional extra, it's embarrassing how much they are. Oh, really? Uh, it's just stupid. I mean, and the, they quote all this, it's much lighter. And all, but I mean, oh, well, you're, you're saving really? at least 20 grams. At, at least. What I found is, and you'll notice on Ferrari's launch cars, um, they'll end up specking them where the interiors look a little bit naff. Yeah. Like it's got that normal silver plastic, and, mm -hmm. and everyone just goes carbon, carbon yeah. everything, and then yeah. and then they're like going, yes, sir, carbon, <laughs> carbon everything. <laughs> so where, where do you want the carbon? Yeah, with the, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, speaking of carbon, uh, we've got it pretty much everywhere. Splitter. External sills here, all the way down the door sill. And again, the exa exaggerated flare that this thing has. Carbon on the rear diffuser as well. Um, do you know if this was something that came standard on a TDF or it, not? It wasn't. It I wasn't. Think, no. This is what I'm saying, they get you everywhere. Every well, single do you know, area. Do you, know, do you know how much it costs to spec a carbon bumper on a LaFerrari? Fire away, how much is it? Around a quarter of a million pounds. A quarter of a million pounds for a carbon fiber for a bumper. bumper. Yeah, so, and this is exactly the kind of thing that you're going to end up reversing onto a curb and scratching. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I mean, it's a low car, and I've noticed while this does have parking sensors and a rear parking camera, um, it, it's, it's, it's low. It's you know, that's the kind of thing where one of those curbs is just going to mm. creep in, and, uh, you know, no doubt that's what. Knowing Ferrari price list, that's probably a 15 grand option, At least. something like that. At least. It's obscene, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, and it's really cool. The stripe continues all the way over the top. Yeah, just the sculpture on this. Mm. Also, this one's got the privacy glass as well. Yeah, which sets it off. Yeah. This like, whole stealth pack thing mm. is great. Again, going around to sculpture, side vents. Um, oh, they're just the coolest thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much of these, it, like, how much of this is actually practical or styling. Mm. Ferrari aren't like Lamborghini in that they stick on parts for parts sake. Normally, 
this kind of stuff is to reduce air pressure under here. Very cool. Okay, so my, my thought process now is we're going to have to get in one, mm -hmm. try it out. I'm sure I'm going to... The danger in that is it's almost going to be a commitment. <laughs> is it, is it going to be is it going to be another LT moment? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's going to be like, oh dear lord, whoever designed this needs a medal. <laughs> um, and then for me, I have fortunately though, however, been able to try an 812. Yeah. So I'll be able to compare those and think it's probably worth saving. And but I'm going to have to wait maybe two years. Maybe. Who knows. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, listen, buddy, I really appreciate Pleasure. it. Um, guys, go onto Instagram, check out Joe Makari Cars. I'll put the uh, link in the description below. These guys not only have some fantastic cars, but some fantastic photography too. Because you always it's got special fun. stuff coming through. I'm very um, And you're always teasing me with TDFs. Every now and again, I'll, uh, I end up dropping Dylan a text at like one in the morning going, dude, that TDF. <laughs> and he's like, I know. <laughs> We're literally having that chat on Sunday. I, I know. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, comments below. Let me know what you think TDF versus 812. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.